Hello everyone, welcome to Virtual Gritty. In today's video, I will do a 2023 review for how the year went, how I, what I did, uh, if I'm happy or not. Uh, then uh, I will take a look at one of one, a company that a viewer, uh, one of you, sent me uh, by mail. He got a very interesting portfolio, high conviction picks. So this one seemed very unknown to me. Uh, so I took a quick look and I will share some of my thoughts. Uh, but yeah, very cool, interesting uh, company. Let's get into it. First, uh, the portfolio, uh, 9th of January 2024. We sit, I sit at 47,300 euros. Same as we left. Uh, wire, net call first position, Carvana, Naked Ones, Bax, Baba, Narco, Rank Generation. Okay, not much new here. Link in the description to keep track of it live. Then, uh, trades in the last video, no trades, no ads, no nothing. You can see it here in the Giro, the same positions, uh, nothing has happened, okay? Uh, remember, I'm not your financial advisor, so do your own work, do your own research, pay someone to do it. I also make whole position in all these cost stocks. This is not to be considered financial advice, okay? It's just for entertaining or informational purpose only. Then uh, in 2023, I had 8,565 euros in four tranches. I have moved from the monthly ads to this. Uh, so adding money when I saw fit, when I saw an opportunity or had an idea, uh, I think that's more fitting for the portfolio. I had 713 euros a month if we divide it by 12. Then in 2023, uh, we had these uh, adding uh, points. So mostly in where I did my buy-ins and I had just two new ideas this year uh, in 2023. Mm, four buys, two were previous ideas, Pax Global and Naked Wines, but Carbon and Nacorp are the new ideas for the year. I didn't sell anything this year. Uh, zero taxes paid or paid for sales uh, for gains. I did incur some taxes in dividends, but good, good on my book. Uh, these are the the, the moves that I have done during the year. Then if we see in 2023, I started with Pax, then Carvana, Nanacorp, at the end of the year in November, I had to make it once. I did one trade every 91 days. <laughs> so I think that's good, good inactivity. I do like it. Uh, they have been funded, uh, 9,242 euros in buys have been funded by 8,565 uh, cash adds to the portfolio and 657 euros in dividends. The portfolio started 1st of January of 2023 at 27,770 euros and it ended on 48,700 euros, which is a good year, we could say. Cash add-ins added for 37% uh, of that move dividends would be 2.3 percent of the move unrealized gains would be the 42 percent uh, remaining okay and this is not money weighted or anything it's just the difference and what each tranche was okay total the net asset value of the portfolio has moved 75 percent which is good having more asset value in, in your asset in the portfolio will make this more interesting. It will make for a better fall, if, if that seems better for you. Okay. Compared to the indices I've been tracking, I don't know if they are the right ones I should be tracking, but I started with these ones and I may, might be too lazy to swap. To swap. Uh, but the Nasdaq has moved 45%. Uh, uh, the S&P 500 has moved 20%. Fearfully Greedy Incorporated has moved almost 37% here. Uh, this is money weighted rate of return. This is time weighted rate of return. Okay, because if I did this, I probably would move to a monthly add in or maybe a yearly add in and not look at the market at all. And here I do time with my investments. So I think that makes more sense. If you have a different opinion, let me know also. Since we started, uh, since I started the portfolio, it's been 1,273 days, almost three years and a half. 
and here we can see a bit of the three indices during the years. Oh, I've been lagging the indices always. Mine was the 2022, where I fell less than the indices. In 2023, I was also still behind the Nasdaq. And so analyze this money weighted rated return again, this time weighted rated for return. I think it's more fair, um, but I'm open to changes. Okay. Uh, if I also on the side, this is just speaking the indices. Uh, this would be the arms book B U S A and the, uh, in front of the A E X X T, which are the lowest cost euro indexes I could find for the for these indices uh, ETFs. And then this is a more real comparison where every time I add cash and I do add that cash physically to the accounts I also keep track of the indices on that day and I see how they evolve so if I added that cash all of it in the S&P 500 or if, we, if I add all that cash in the Nasdaq compared to that we're 1% over the S&P 500 and minus 3.5 uh, behind the Nasdaq that would be at the end of 2023 okay all these numbers at the end of 2023. If you like the portfolio and want to keep track of my investment ideas, uh, I don't know, losses probably in the future, uh, subscribe, like the video. Thank you. Now for the idea of today, uh, it will be Nokian Tires. It's a company based in Finland and they do tires, car tires and heavy equipment tires mainly. Uh, they also have some, uh, well, we'll see that. Uh, also, it's a company that has had a huge like change in the last year since the war in Russia. They had the big operation of manufacturing in Russia, which was roughly 70% of their passenger tires. Uh, numbers are very opaque, so they don't disclose all the production and everything. We also don't know like what factory was more efficient than the other, but we can guess that the Russian one was making cheaper tires that they would be distributing distributing through the world. Uh, we will see what what has happened. Okay, but they have a factory in Dayton, in USA. They have a factory in Finland, in Nokia, and they used to have a one in Russia, not no more. So let's not think about that. And then in Romania. They just invented 650 million in a new uh, factory okay, to make tires. The uh, cool thing about the factory is that it will be CO2 neutral. Uh, that's what they say. Okay. They also have uh, this from 2022, 2021, sorry, the, this graph, but it's a prettier one I could find. Maybe they had the same 2022, but okay. Don't look at the Russian one because they don't have it anymore. But what I want to say is that they, they will have like these uh, approved authorization uh, dealers. Okay, we, you have to subtract the, the one in Russia. Uh, then the BNR, it's like a chain where they do service of tires and other things. Uh, and they are like one of the biggest ones in, in Europe. And they do have them in all, sorry, the, it's the orange one. They do have in all the Nordic countries and some of the Eastern European countries, okay? In the Western, they have partners, okay? The entire store, these 110 stores, completely uh, zero. So they don't have them anymore, okay? If we go by revenues, uh, passenger tires would be like 70% of their business, heavy, Equipment tires that will be tractors and heavy equipment uh, would be 15% of, of sales, and BNR would be 20%. BNR, I don't know how do you, how do you pronounce it. Uh, we can check the numbers. I picked last nine months because it's the last numbers we have, and also it reflects the exit of Russia with not the internal efficiencies uh, anymore. So maybe there are more accurate numbers, okay? This would be sales by region, okay? So the Nordic is their biggest market. It's where they started in Finland. And it makes sense. They have a like, number one position with their tires there. And that's probably one of their biggest modes. Their market position, their uh, business 
I don't know, reputation in, in the Nordic countries, that would be maybe number one in their modes. Then other Europe is like a third of what they do in the Nordic countries. In the US, they do a bit over what they do in Europe and nothing in other countries. Like after exiting Russia, there's almost nothing. Okay, 800 million sales in the last nine months, which it's 18% uh, less than what it would be in 2022. And this excluding Russia, okay? But here there probably would, would be some efficiency things, which they are not here anymore, okay? Uh, and here would be by the operation. So uh, passenger tires, that's like four, uh, four and a half million, 450 million, sorry, uh, around 200 million in heavy tires, 200 million in Bayonor, some eliminations because they do cross the cell internally. Uh, total the same, of course, in cells. This for nine months, okay? The guidance for the year is 1.1 to 1.2 billion, okay? <coughs> if we compare, uh, if we take a look then in what would be like operating profit, operating income, it's rough. So the last year after exiting Russia, it's been tough. So uh, maybe some part is because they are losing a lot of sales and then the costs are just uh, chugged into less number of tires and that takes a lot of operating profit out. Also because I think the second mode for this company was that they would be producing a lot of their tires in Russia at a lower cost and a lower cost of products and suppliers. And they don't, they don't have that anymore. So I might be wrong. So here I'm, it's what I sensed from reading everyone all reports that for them, that was how they could be like, it's one of their modes. Like that's pretty much it. If I'm wrong, uh, we'll see. Okay. After exiting Russia, the stock has moved minus 75%. And here it relies the opportunity. Is this justified or not? Uh, we'll see. What happened? So they exited Russia after the war. They were sanctioned for tires made in Russia that they couldn't be sold elsewhere. So their the executive team decided to sell the Russia operator, operator, which was like in 2022, this is including, they would be doing 430 million. So they, it was the second biggest uh, region in sales for them. If you compare after, nothing. So Asia is almost nothing, okay? So in sales, they have lost, depends what year you check, between 15, 20, 25% of sales. If we compare production, that's worse because in 2021, they were doing 19 million passenger tires and 24 million kilos of heavy tires. In 2023, these rough numbers, because they don't disclose exactly production numbers, so I cannot know. But in the US, they make a bit less of 4 million tires. In Finland and Nokia in the old uh, factory, they were doing 5.2 million, uh, so less than 6 million, like this, then 5.5. And, and they are starting to externalize some production just to meet their demand, so 1 to 3 million uh, tires, okay? This, if you add everything up, is less than half what they were doing in 2021, okay? So I think half of the valuation is justified to be lost. And probably mm, a lot of the profits were coming from the lower, uh, lower price tires uh, made in Russia. Then the, what's coming in is the Romania factory, which they will produce here by my numbers is like 7 million tires, 8 million tires, 9 million tires. We don't know, but around that in, in total, at the end, it will be 50 million tires. It's what they expect in-house in 2027. And they can maybe have one, three, four, five million externalized, maybe. We don't know anything of it. Nothing has hit, like I say, like the ink. So we haven't seen any reports from those companies. Uh, so we don't know, it just promises at this point. So you can start to see that they want uh, 
not in best, but also I won't really position myself much. Uh, I want to, I will keep an eye on this company, but uh, we don't know a lot at, the, at this point, and we cannot know a lot. If we see how they are positioned in the world, uh, just to compare, Michelin is doing like 23, 21 billion euros in sales, Bridgestone is like 23, 24 billion euros. Uh, they do some service business, so the biggest producer would be Michelin, and they are doing like 200 million tires. So knocking at, at its peak was doing like close to 20 million tires. Now they will be doing uh, half, half that, okay? So they are like, uh, they have their small pond in Finland where they are very competitive and the big fish, but if we compare in the world, they are like a very small fish. And there's a lot of R&D, there's a lot of skill efficiencies, and unless you operate in a lower cost production zone or low cost production setup, you will fall short to the, these big guys, okay? And these big guys make the best tires in the world. Uh, ask anyone, okay? I did some rough numbers, very, very rough. So don't take this for anything. But uh, for 2021, if we go by revenues uh, per tire, Nokia is selling their tire cheaper than Michelin and Bridgestone. So they were undercutting them. They don't do, maybe they do the same quality or worse, okay? So, but better, they don't have that market position. Then the core, the the cost of making the tires would be like 73 euros for an Nokian. I will appeal to this that it's from making them in Russia. And then Michelin and Bridgestone, they have higher costs than this smaller producer. But Michelin produces all over the world, Bridgestone produces all over the world, mainly in Japan, but all over the world. Uh, the op operating profit per tire is higher in Nokian. So we had this very high earning, small, fish in that small pond in in Finland. We we should see how the numbers look later. At the moment they are operating at five five and a half uh, percent margin. A bit less I think they I think they, at the end of the year they think it will be five and a half. At the moment I have counted like it's three percent operating profit. So the exit has hurt them and we'll we shall see how much. Real real earning power before the exit of Russia, it would be like 100 million euros a year. That would be the number I would put in, in the DCF to see how much I, I would pay for this business. Now, my best guess is that it's between 100 and 140 million euros uh, for a few years. And maybe in 2027, they can creep back to this number. Maybe get better with doing this change. Maybe it was a change for better. But the fact is that I don't know. So I cannot really put a real earning power on this. <coughs> if you see the volume loss in 2023 is also alarming because sure, they they say that they are losing these cells from the from a weak market. And if it's because they, you don't have the tires, okay, but if it's from a weak market, that's an extra problem that we are having. I wanted to compare if everyone was really losing on this uh, huge amount uh, for the year. I checked Michelin and they see globally losing 3.6% uh, uh, of volume on tires, the number of tires. They are compensating in other things as uh, Nokian is also doing. Uh, they have raised prices a lot to keep these this revenues up. So loss on volume is worse even. Uh, and this uh, Bridgestone, uh, which they, what they have picked up from their report is that US and Europe for uh, like the, when you change your tires, the, those tires, uh, it's weak, like it's very weak. Take, taking a look at the numbers, yeah, it looks pretty weak compared to last, last year. Um, but I mean, even if we compare, they are losing, Nokia is losing more than these guys. That's what they get from the numbers. Okay. Uh, another worry, worrying thing for me here, which we have, I don't know, we have teams, some of these people have been here for a while, the CEO not so long, but the ownership in general here, maybe it's because they have changed everyone and I'm wrong, but 
I don't think that's the case. The ownership here is so low. Like there are 138 million shares, 137 million shares. And these people work there and they own so little of it. And they do have a, a share, uh, share plan. For me, that's worrying. Uh, always when I'm taking a company, I'm always thinking, are they behaving like an owner? Would they? The fact that they are, it takes a lot of work outside of my plate. Like if they are an owner, they do tend to behave like an owner. Maybe they do good things or bad things, but uh, because they, they have a war, wrong judgment, but it's not like they are working for me, they are working for them. And here it's not the case. They, they don't, no one owns here a substantial amount of shares. And in my opinion. And then valuation, I, I did some rough numbers, taking the, the, those 100, 140 million uh, operating profit a year, then taking into the app, which has balloons, okay? At the moment, it's like around 600 million. Take another amount of that, if you think that's, that one is not fitting, it won't change max, ma a lot on the valuation. Uh, but yeah, I put this 12 euros after the earnings and everything I, I thought would be like ballpark uh, accurate. Uh, we'll see, uh, we don't know, it's, it's so unknown at this point. But I will keep it on my watch list at this 12 euros, uh, see how it looks in the next quarters. Uh, I will keep an eye on it. I, I think after the Romania operation starts, after we, we see some internal efficiencies, uh, after we see how the market develops, their market, I mean their sales, not the share price or anything, um, maybe there's an entrance point for me in the future. I will keep an eye on it. Very interesting pick. If any of you has a high conviction picks or want to share his portfolio, uh, your portfolios, send me a mail or comment uh, that those positions and I will try to take a look at them, uh, see, see if some of them are interesting. Please do so, I need more ideas. Okay, everyone, be safe, take care, bye-bye.